श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू माई स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्रीमद जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू आवर पूर्व आचार्य आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू आवर ट्वेल्व अलवार्स आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू मदर लक्ष्मी एंड आई पे माई ओबेसन सेस टू लॉर्ड श्री मन्नारायण I welcome all of you here physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those that's watching this discourse locally, nationally and internationally and I welcome in advance those that's going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world subsequently. Our topic continues on who am i where i come from what am i doing now and where to go to and as i stated these are the most intelligent questions a human being can ask him or herself although there are 8.4 million species and an infinite amount of souls compressed in this universe it is only in the human form that you can ask these questions who am i where do i come from what am i doing now and where do i go so to qualify in any subject matter any cause in any education system starting from primary to high school to university and then subsequent education through university to qualify on any subject matter you need to do the full course you need to do the full course similarly to answer these questions you need to do the full course in spirituality and it is for this reason that gurus take their birth time yesterday so that you have adequate information and especially now in this world of technology you have adequate information in regards to these four questions at your fingertips so if you are suffering then you are suffering through your own negligence and ignorance the supreme lord has created all sorts of systems for you through the vedic injunctions you are always in debt you are always in debt and whoever is in debt they'll always be under stress whoever is in debt will be always under stress like your financial debt if you owe in for your house if you owe in for your car if you owe in for your lights and whatever you owe for then you'll always be under stress yes or no and i want to stop here because i just remembered something whilst i was in meditation avir bhai siril and satish i want you all to hear very very carefully 
whilst I was in meditation. Ashmika and Jessica screamed Narayan Day, never sing Narayan Day, screamed that Lord Narayan had to first cover his ears. When he couldn't handle it, he told me, Acharya Ji, let me leave, I'll come back later. <laughs> and he still has not come back. For the very first time since I started satsang, Lord Narayan is present, but from far away. He's afraid that his eardrums may burst. And he's listening to the whole universe, every soul cries out to him, he listens, and he wants to protect himself against these two, Ashmika and Jessica. Is a guru right or wrong? You all heard screaming this morning. Each one wants to scream louder than the... All right, coming back. I uh, hope Lord Narayan have uh, the courage to come back. <laughs> so we are always in debt. Now let us look at it logically. When you are born from the very first, second. Okay, we are celebrating a few birthdays today. We are celebrating a few birthdays today, I think three, Praveen Bhai, Srinika and Hemita. Uh, Praveen Bhai is original birthday, birthday is really today, all right? When we celebrate birthdays, birth means from the time you left your mother's womb. But if somebody asks you how old you are, is it the same as the time you left your mother's womb? How old you are? What you must add to your birth date? Okay, you understand? So when you fill in, in your forms, <laughs> you must always write your birthday because the South African law takes your birthday from date of birth, the day you left your mother's womb. Plus you can write there, if you are fully matured, nine months, some people are born seven months and eight months. Right, right or wrong, Jessica? Okay, so the whole world is wrong and the guru is right. Like I taught you all about the twins. Taught you all about the twins. The first sperm that enters the mother's womb, then the second sperm enters the mother's womb where there's a soul. The second sperm that comes out first is the younger child because it entered the womb second. All right. So even this, the guru need to rectify around the world and I told you I tried it and his two brothers were so upset that for 40 years the big brew always instructed the small brew <laughs> and now I changed it <laughs> both of them were upset all right so let's see now from the time of conception from the time of conception, you are now in the womb for nine months or eight months or seven months. You are there because your mother is alive. Yes? No mother, you won't be in that womb. And who's responsible for your mother to be in that womb? Hello? Trick question. Her parents. Her 
parents. So you are residing and nourishing yourself for the time of conception in your mother's womb. You have a debt to her parents and their parents, which we call ancestors. Yes or no? Do you have a debt to your ancestors? Direct debt to your ancestors. Do you have that debt? So, at conception, up until the time you leave your mother's womb, you have a debt to your ancestors and that continues, does it not? As long as you live, you have a debt to your ancestors. You owe them to be who you are today. Whole line of ancestors. You owe them to be who you are today. Then when you take your birth, when you take your birth, you find air, oxygen, cosmic energy flowing around you. You breathe in. Remember when you are born, some people get a few smacks until they start breathing. Who remembers getting a few smacks? Some smacks were so hard, I think majority of my devotees, that it shook the software. <laughs> shook the software and the guru is still trying to repair the wires that were dislodged in that smack. Yeah? So when you are born, you immediately start breathing. You immediately start breathing. There's cosmic energy that you intake and then it is distributed through your system. It is broken down and distributed. It's just not oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. It's not just that. That what you breathe in is split into five and then it is split into another five. That breath is split into ten and then you get the expulsion of carbon dioxide. So there is a deity. There is a deity, a controlling deity for air in this universe. Controlling deity for air in this universe. Like you get the mayor that controls the municipality that you live in and you have a debt to the municipality every day for water and lights and sewage and refuse removal. There are different department heads that control each of this department. And for every day that we live in this municipality, we are in debt to these different department heads. Similarly, this cosmos or this universe has 333 controlling cosmic administrators. And when you are born, when you breathe in, you breathe out, that's a minute your death started with the controlling deities. You have Surya Bhagwan and you get in that sunlight. You cannot live without sunlight. You have a debt to Surya Bhagwan. At night you get the moon, you get the stars. All these cosmic administrators, the moon is Chandra Bhagwan. The moon is Chandra Bhagwan and there's a place called Chandra Lok. There's a place called Chandra Lok. Chandra Lok is the moon in its subtle form. It's a subtle moon and a gross moon is the moon that you 
see the moon where astronauts go up and down but astronauts cannot go to chandra lok they can only go to the gross moon that you see but your souls your souls when you when your soul leaves your body it goes to chandra lok and from chandra lok it goes through the system of liberation or through the system to come back you understand so you owe chandra lok you have a debt because the moon gives energy at night you next morning when you get up don't think who watered your garden mama nobody watered mommy never get up in the middle of the night and water the garden when the leaves are wet it's the moon it is the moon the juice of the moon it's called soma it's called soma s o m a it is that juice which is which nourishes all the plants at night and you partake in eating vegetables so you owe you have a natural debt upon birth to all the cosmic administrators is it logical so you have a debt to your ancestors had it not been for your line of ancestors you could not have been born so you owe them continuously then you owe all the cosmic administrators 330 million devis and devtas when you breed in there's a devi and devta when you breed out there's a devi and devta when you blink your eyes your blinking of your eyes is not you it's controlled by a presiding deity every action that you take is controlled by one of 330 million devis and devtas every action you take you blink your eyes there's devis and devtas that allowed you to blink your eyes do you understand now you can only understand this in the human form as i've stated there are 8.4 million species of life forms on this planet in those other life forms you just live you just live there's no accrual of sin if a lion eats a rabbit no karma all right mama but when you eat a rabbit as you continue to eat other you extended your murder rate for another year all right because as long as you eat the flesh of a murdered animal you are an accomplice to the murderer accomplice to the murderer both pay the same price for that karma so you are in continuous karma murder of animals all right so when the lion eat the rabbit no karma license to eat when you eat the rabbit and all the edibles in that satish bhai there in a bag to there is instant karma all right now how do you sort out the debt to your ancestors and the debt to your devis and devtas how do you pay that debt Amita how you pay the debt to your ancestors how do you pay the debt of the devis and devtas yeah devis and devtas 
Yes, so that is when rituals and offerings in the first part of the Vedas we have rituals and offerings but you merely pay in your debt you are not eradicating your karma so to pay for your debt there is rituals and offerings and sacrifices that is in the Vedas, first half of the Vedas is to pay debt to your cosmic administrators and to your ancestors. And the second half of the Vedas is to eradicate your karmas that you have accrued not only in this lifetime but in previous lifetimes. So where is that junction? How do you negate your debt to your ancestors and to the Devis and Devtas? Why did the Supreme Lord create the system in this way? When you breathe in, Breathe out, you know there is air there, you know somebody has to be in charge of the air, yes? Then you know you have a debt and there is a specific ritual or puja that you have to do for that. When you see outside, you can see the sun, then you see the rain, all these are tangible things that you experience that you experience. It's there, you can see it, you can eat it, you can live it. So it is primary education. Yeah, you are learning how to appreciate and have gratitude and you are learning how to worship. Aren't you learning how to worship? And is it not tangible and practical? Is it not primary? Yes? When you understand these concepts, you understand you owe. You understand you owe. Then you need to ask yourself, why am I? Yeah. Why am I? Yeah. When you ask that question, then your, conscience, your consciousness shifts to higher learning. Now it is higher learning. Not only you understand you have to pay for your debts, now you have to know how you got here, why you got here, what you are doing here now, and how do you come out of this situation. For both, for both, that which you are eternally indebted to, that which you are internally indebted to, and to ask that four questions, the Supreme Lord has created the Guru system. Supreme Lord has created the Guru system. The minute you take a guru seriously and you say, I now belong to this guru. You say, I now belong to this guru. All your debts to the devis and devtas are now over. You all heard of company buying other companies would their bad debts. Have you all heard of that? So similarly, when you really in your heart, in your heart to heart, initiation and all these things are technical, superficial, but it's part of a formality. Everything depends in your heart. When in your heart you say, 
I am now following this guru. I really believe in everything he says and he does from your heart. At that point, the guru buys your debt. The guru buys your debt and he sorts it out with the devis and devtas because the guru is the sum total of all the devis and devtas. And if you look nicely, if you look nicely, you'll have the opportunity to see the whole 330 million devis and devtas residing in the because the Guru is the sum total of all the devis and devtas. This is a Vedic injunction. Vedic injunction means absolute truth that nobody can change, not even our village idiot. Nobody can change this truth. All right? This truth is going to continue to exist eternally. And this is why when you join a guru, you start flying like a feather because the burden, the cosmic burden is already sorted out. So no Devi and Devta come and trouble you. No Devi and Devta come and trouble you anymore. The Guru has sorted out your debt. Devis and Devtas will continuously knock on your door for their debt. And you will have misery in many, many forms. But when you join a Guru from your heart, then that 330 million Devi and Devta which includes Mr. Yam Raj. Many of you are here because Yam Raj did not come and take you away. Yet. Alright? Because you are now with a Guru. So this is how important it is that if you get an opportunity to find a bona fide guru in this world, go buy two pairs of handcuffs. Handcuff both your hands to the guru's both feet. And never ever throw the keys away. Throw the keys away. This is how important A guru is in Sanatan Dharma. First is the Supreme Lord. Second is his creation. And first in his creation is the Guru principle. First in his creation is the Guru principle. God, creation, guru, principle, then the 330 million devis and devtas. Then the 330 million devis and devtas. This is how creation takes place. This is the sequence of creation. First creation, then Lord Brahma, then Lord Brahma's first mind-born sons are the Guru principles. The Guru principles. Then everything else comes through. So if you take this principle lightly, I'm not the principle, I'm just a personification of the principle at this point in time. I won't be here for ever, but this principle is eternal and timelessly gurus are born around the world to personify this principle in various ratios and proportions. 
Some gurus will personify it 10%, some 50%, some 80%. I'm personifying it 100%. That is why I'll have the least amount of least amount of followers. Because how many people study astrophysics compared to other general subjects in a university? Abir, how many? If a university has 20,000 people, how many from the 20,000 will study astrophysics in that university? Uh, maybe about 25. 25, 30 in that one university. So similarly, in this ashram, I'm only going to have from the thousands of Sanatan Dharmis in this world, in this reservoir hill surrounding area. Physically, I'll just have a small number because I'm teaching it 100%. And people, when they get whacked for not conforming in that 100%, they like to run for their lives. Right? So I'm not going to change. I had no choice in teaching 100%. I have no choice in the <coughs> matter. All right. So this is where we are. This is where we are. So we need to break down our understanding. We need to break down our understanding in small bits and pieces. Small bits and pieces so that we can live it. So that we can live it. That is why when you buy your half a sheep, you don't look at that whole half a sheep because you know it's difficult to eat it at one go. You know Jessica will make small portion, portions for you. <laughs> yes? N now one son is gone, the portion is gone even smaller. Then when you look at that half a sheep, it is approachable. <laughs> Alright? Jessica made it possible. Jessica is your eating guru. Right. But, similarly, if you take my entire discourse, it's going to be very difficult for you to assimilate it. So you need to take the piece that suits you, that is making sense to you. This whole discourse is not for everybody at one go. This discourse, if there's 20 people here, then it is chopped up in 20 pieces. But Guru has a way of making it into one cake. All right? Making it into one cake, but every portion is different. Even Tiveshni has a... Most of the dis discourses, uh, Tiveshni has a big, huge chunk in it. Yeah, Tiveshni? Yeah. Are there any questions? Any questions? So let's recap. Let's recap. When you are conceived in the womb, immediately at that point, you are indebted to your ancestors because your mother's womb is your world. Your mother's womb become your world for nine months and your mother is there through the grace of your ancestors and you become indebted to them. And as soon as you take your birth physically, then all the cosmic administrators that is supplying you with everything, even mobility, even mobility. See, I did this. This up and down 
actually is not from me it is a perception that i am responsible for my hand going up and down this up and down movement of my hand is controlled by a devi or a devta we are under a false assumption that we are this body if we are not this body then who is in control of this body we make the intention the actual control is from the cosmic administrators we are just puppets here as per our karmas we are puppets as per our karmas actual movement is up and down movement this up and down movement a devi or devta is responsible when you blink your eyes devi or devta is responsible just now i saw shrinika yeah she tried to look at me like this then her eyes i think emita caught her in the camera then her eyes went and closed then she forcefully opened <laughs> then she closed then she forcefully opened you caught her emita yeah it's on guru does not lie it's on evidence there's evidence there's a devi or devta that was making a fall a slip you understand so there's nothing when you open your mouth to eat don't think you you are opening your mouth you are mechanically controlled by 330 cosmic administrators this is sanatan dharma and if scientists start looking through the lens of my discourse all answers will be found all the answers will be found every answer if you do not know who you are if you do not know who you really are how can you be responsible for any movement in this universe where will you go to you understand imagine you don't know who you are will god leave you to move on your own all your movements are restricted every movement you just a mechanical body every movement in your body from your breathing to your eating to your sleeping everything is controlled externally everything is controlled externally and when you come to this understanding life becomes so great doesn't it doesn't it then this material life in which you are trying to prove yourself aren't you trying to prove to your husband to your wife to your children to society to your boss everyone is trying to prove something somewhere in reality you can't prove anything because you are not the <coughs> mover and shaker rita one devi and devta dressed you up this morning <laughs> don't think you put the lipstick All right Rita You must feel like a queen because everything is been done for you you think you do in it but in reality everything is been done for you And this is important when you have real knowledge what happens to misery It doesn't exist it ceases to exist because that does not belong to you yes or no it does not belong to you because jessica bobby will be here just now i try and contact you i just check he sent me you gave him all the details all right when you have real knowledge 
then the misery loses its value. The misery loses its value. You understand? After attaining real knowledge, all what you perceive to be miserable loses its real value. But you need to take this discourse, the bits that suit you, and you need to start living it. You need to start living it. And this is why it is important that families attend satsang. So half of the family don't experience and live and the other half don't No, You understand? So it is important that knowledge reaches everyone. So I know 99% of you are thinking, hey, this guru, I move my own hand. How this guru said? <laughs> I put lipstick, powder, perfume. Rita? The lady in the salon dyed my hair. And Guru is saying, Devi and Devta dyed my hair. Huh? I kill that. I kill that. I. Once you kill that I, then you will flow with the universe. As long as you got that I, you are flowing against the universe. Practice it. Kill that I and go with the wave. Alright? Those of you that can afford it, go to the beach. See how the wave? Don't go like the surf borders I saw the other day. Against the wave and then board the wave and come with the wave. Alright? Just wherever the wave takes you, go. It means you're not going against the universe. You're not going against the law of the universe. When you get up in the morning, whatever the situation is, flow with it. What you must do? Flow with it. If you go against it, and that's where the misery starts, taking place. But for all of these things, out of all of these things, you must always understand the Guru like a hundred story building. Guru is the lift, otherwise you have to take the stairs. And you know how long you take the stairs to a one hundred story building? You want to reach the top. You want to reach the top. Those people that have a guru. And this guru is a 21st century guru. So when you jump in this lift, one lady will tell you, hello. <laughs> one lady will tell you, hello. And as you go each floor, the lady will tell you, pass in first floor, you pass in second floor. Same lady will tell you, you reached your destination on the hundredth floor, welcome. You are karma free. Alright? So if you want to have that experience with the lady, Dana, you can go up and down, up and down the lift. Dana like ladies. So Dana can either get a car and drive all day, lady will speak to him, or go up and down, up and down the lift. Dana will be very, very happy. Must, uh, must see in the photographs. Dana always sitting there with the ladies. <laughs> Every meal photograph, Amita. <laughs> all right. You'll find Dana there by the ladies. Just give him a car with the GPS, let the lady talk to him all day. Oh, you can go up and down this lift. Okay, to wrap up, I think it is important that I, I bring this segment in. So, I think last year, I was invited to a meeting. 
and I was co-opted in an interim structure of the policing, of the spiritual policing forum. Spiritual policing forum. So I stated on in quite a few satsangs that I don't even know how I became a policeman. It was the last thing on this earth that I was would have thought to be is to become a policeman. Remember, I, I got an exemption. I went to university, and I would have. Uh, I don't know if Mataji remembers, but I was going into Standard Bank. Last I know, I was going into Standard Bank, and next I find myself as a policeman. Don't even know why. I just know, you know, Mataji's uh, mother, she's one of the devis and devtals that created a lot of havoc for me. And it was her that I went and dropped off somewhere that I got sapped up into the police force. I was forced into the police force. All right? And I just landed there. And I went for a meeting this week, I think on Wednesday. And whilst I was in that meeting, I had this realization that in fact it was God that sent me there. So when I'm completing my last part of my life as a guru, I have all the experience of a policeman, both on patrolling, uh, admin. I was in charge of admin when I left. I know everything that happens in the police force. And now, again, I don't even know how I was really invited to this meeting. Really, really invited to this meeting. And when I went to this meeting, it was 30 of us, they broke us into groups of sixes. We're supposed to break into groups of 30, five, fives, five, groups of five. But in this group, the spiritual policing forum, it was just Rafik Bhai himself. And I gravitated to this group because of my previous experience and Sherwin was my driver so three of us sat in this group. Today this forum has a lot of recognition in government. KZN, no not KZN, Itequini, 42 police stations have coordinators now to work with the spiritual policing forum. So our job is to change the inner man. When I was there at Bria, I was changing the outer man with guns and kicks and boots and bullets. So changing the outer man and now our job as the spiritual policing forum is to change the inner man. So there is some instructions but we have to form our own constitution. And I decided to use this platform as a guru to make a substantive difference in this country. So if we include in our next meeting, I'm going to give these pointers out. So I want to use this platform not only to change the community. I want to use this platform to change the policemen as well. Because if you change the community and spiritualize the community, whilst the police force 
that is in control of this community is not spiritualized is there any sense so we also going to change the inner man inside a policeman we want his conscience to awaken when his hand reaches out as soon as his hand reaches out he must see the guru's face in his mind's eye he must know gurus molanas pastors rabbis they are watching you now and not only the undercover police or hawks now they got spiritual and religious leaders on to them you think it's possible jessica yes so this is not a prescription i just conjured this also the municipalities we need to go and sit inside the municipality because we are coordinated we are broken up into districts so in that districts we also have municipalities and we need to go there and clean up the municipalities we not policing you materially we are the spiritual <coughs> policing forum so we will police your morality we will police your morality and i think this is going to change south africa in a very very big way because the religious and spiritual leaders were not included in the reformation of this country nothing could get reformed now this gap is been plugged so we are going to have discourses like this i am going to bring now the uh, the mayor jessica uh, prison services we we need to go into prison and change the gangsters there that selling drugs they still selling drugs they selling it from prison my greatest ambition as soon as etequini region is launched in this ward there'll be no drug den in this ward 23 there'll be no drug den and then i'm going to belong to etequini as well remember i sit on the kwazulu natal executive so i'm starting with drugs i am starting with drugs is it possible i ask this i ask this in our meeting on wednesday i ask them if it's possible and i told them that the temperature of my blood goes beyond 1000 degrees when i see these drug lords walking around remember i'm from the 80s you you understand so we because drugs is over 51% of the crime that committed is drug related so if we take away drugs 50% of crime is going to go away so i'm going to be going after the drug lords i'm going to have the cpf i'm going to have community police in forum and i'm going to have station commanders that's a mandate we got this is our mandate so in ward 23 i'm going to start this process rolling because at the moment i'm the only former policeman who is now in the spiritual policing forum and i have all the experience necessary to make these drug lords run for their lives never to return in ward 23 again all right we're going to have a drug uh, sorry a spiritual police in forum desk i'm going to nominate somebody to communicate the ashram is going to communicate with the various departments all the departments that's necessary to keep our society civil human rights police uh prison 
So the Guru's work is just getting more and more, but when you look at it, this is what Lord Sri Ramanuj wanted. This is called social integration. You just don't integrate, you also clean up the mess. All right? So maybe Guru might not live too long. Let's see who's more powerful, the drug lords or the Guru. Because I found one drug lord one day and I told him, if I ever catch you doing this again, I'm going to close you down myself. And he said, you know who you're talking to. I'll come and kill you and your entire family. All right? So you think uh, we should be afraid of these threats? Now, when did we experience that we can become clean as a country? All of us experienced it. We know it is possible. We know Guru is not dreaming. When we, did we all experience that South Africa can be drug-free? COVID showed us. COVID showed us that we can be drug-free and crime-free. Drug-free and crime-free. So why can't we use the same resources? Why can't the army get involved? in the cleaning up of drugs. Why can't all the police departments get involved? And you all know I'm not a guru who sits here. I only sit here on Sundays. You think we don't have capacity as a community. Leave all these structures as a community. You think we don't have capacity to activate all these departments that's there already to perform the functions that they're supposed to be performing. Do we have co capacity as a community? Yes. So we need to start, and it needs to start at the Sri Narayan Dham. So you all are all soldiers and generals. Rita? Soldiers and generals. I think what uh, uh, Mataji must do is design some Kali outfits for all my Maha Kalis. If they can, if two of them could make Lord Narayan shift today, <laughs> what do you think can happen to all the drug lords in this district? <laughs> Jai Shri Narayan. <laughs>